unfortunate, you know, and for both the families and, yeah. and the state. And if that were to happen, the consequences would be that instead of being an asset, these children, if they are discriminated or ignored or neglected, instead of them being an asset to the state, they will later turn out to become liabilities. Isn't it? Absolutely. You are very right there. And that's why we are saying that, you know, as an organization, you know, we, are, we don't only look at migrant women, young migrant women. We are looking at migrants in general and really facilitating the migrant youth to ensure that, you know, they don't become what you have just exactly said, the liability. That instead of becoming liability, we facilitate them. Most of these young people are very innovative. If you see the things that they come up with, whether it's through the, the social media, the, the innovations in IT, the innovations in science, the innovation in many things that they can do. So they can actually add value to this country. There are young people who actually can be molded to be able to improve our economy. Uh, later, we are looking for people to work in this country every time in different areas, you know, high professional areas. These young people have actually facilitated they can become that. So there's an opportunity to do that, and we should exactly do that, that we facilitate them to become the best they can become. They have an ability in the future. And if we don't do it now, then it's going to be too late. And it will be quite unfortunate for everybody, um, not only for the migrant community and their parent. It will be actually uh, bad for the state as well. Well, yeah, it, but in talking about all this, in talking about the governmental um, um, uh, responsibilities, the system responsibilities to the uh, children and their parents, especially migrant uh, uh, parents and their children, we also, you, you talked about facilitating them to become the best that they can be. They can be. I'm very concerned about in the course of that facilitation, are they also told to take charge of their destiny? For example, making the most use of the opportunities before them? Because there are a lot of loads of opportunities out there. Are they told that, okay, this is it. Take, make the most use of these opportunities while we are waiting for the others. Absolutely, Peter, you're very right there because I don't think, you know, maybe based on what uh, the experiences of the parent has been, many parents still, and in particular you can imagine if it's a woman who have been trying to take care of six children or five children, sometimes, you know, and that's why, again, we do our capacity building training, sometimes, you know, you lose your self-esteem, you lose the confidence, you know, confidence of everything. And I, I told you about mental health because our concern as an organization has been the damage on that has already been done to the parent. If the mental health of uh, a parent is actually affected, it will be very, very difficult for them to stand up. You know, we have to actually come out as role model ourselves, and that's why myself, I put myself forward, you know, in the things that I do, you know, developing an organization like this one, but also in other things, uh, because I'm a, also a commissioner for Irish human rights, like you said earlier. There are so many opportunities out there. And those opportunities are not written that they are opportunities for Irish uh, white children. They are opportunities for everybody in this country. But also the parent has the responsibility to push uh, these children into actually grabbing those opportunities and going forward for them, you know. In many things, for example, that I have applied for, you know, before I applied to be in the board of the National Women Council, take an example. There are also youth organizations that young people can engage with, for example. They can become actually board members of those youth. But are they doing that? The parents need to encourage them, but also the youth have to feel motivated. I told you, you know, my activism started in Kenya, actually didn't start here. And it started when I was in secondary school. I was already actually going to all the crabs that we had, you know. So young people even here, they need to take this as their country, whether they were born here or not. I wasn't born here, but I go looking for things. You know, so young people need to take this as the place that they are, they are in now and that they are growing in and where the opportunities are. I imagine, you know, when I look at the things and I say that, you know, in Ireland there are more opportunities for me than there were in Kenya. And I try to look for those opportunities. So it works two ways. Parents should 
try as much as possible to encourage their children to get into these opportunities. They should engage with organizations which are already out there. You know, we have organizations like Akidwa, we have organizations like the Migrant Council of Ireland, Irish Refugee Council, and most of the time, you know, they have a lot of activities and programs which not only take um, young people from here, but also they send them to other European countries, you know, with the programs. So the, the parent can do that and encourage the, the youth but also the youth has to go out there, you know, and especially when the youth are from 18 years old, they should actually be able to take full responsibility to know that, you know, they are not going back. Their years are moving forward and they are growing. So the opportunities are so many in this country, but both the parent and the children have actually to have that understanding. And I think it's also having also... Um, a group of migrant leaders who also work as role models, as mentors, as you know, people who help our young people and our youth to move into the right direction.